Hi everyone, this is Samir Singh Jani here uh, from the Digital Fifth, uh, and this session is specifically focused on uh, soft pause. So we'll talk a lot about what's happening in soft pause, and we have industry stalwarts here, uh, Dilip, Jeev, and Akash all there, so they will guide us on what it is. So I don't, you don't need to uh, uh, sort of uh, bear with me. I'll not be talking too much. It's the experts out there uh, who will actually guide us on what's happening. We have the network ahead. We have the Banker who drives acquisition in the market, and and Akash is there from the from the from the uh, technology and platform perspective, right? So we have the right guys in the room. So other chai apko, you don't need to be uh, bear with me at all. A uh, quick one, uh, I think, uh, just for those who don't know me, know me and my organization, uh, we run uh, the digital fifth, which purely focused on consulting, partnership training and hiring, but all for fintech domain. Uh, maybe we are the largest guys, obviously in India. Uh, but of course, within Asia also, maybe maybe, maybe the largest uh, fintech consulting firm. Uh, maybe a quick uh, 30 seconds from your side, uh, Akash, on uh, Cash Free, and then we'll proceed. Over to you, Ken. Over to you. Sure, sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Akash. I'm founder of Cash Free Payments. So today, we have one of the largest payments platform in India. And we help all the online companies with their payment collection and payment dispersal requirement. So you can use cash free to collect payment from your customer, disperse payments to your vendor customers. And also we have a bunch of verification tools that you can use as part of your, you know, like part of your multiple flows. Right? So we process more than 30 billion transactions on an annual basis, 30 billion worth of transactions on an annual basis. And, and in terms of volume, process up to 1 billion transactions on an annualized basis. And so we have more than 1 lakh merchants on the platform today, and we have been doing pretty well for last, you know, like 3-4 years. Uh, phenomenal and then all we thought that uh, payments cannot be sort of uh, innovated further and you're doing it so super stuff uh this particular in this particular session we are also launching our white paper uh, on on soft pause idea is that in, in india very few people know what's exactly sort soft pause and that also from a uh, merchant ecosystem perspective right merchants need to utilize this platform it's a, literally the uh, i think in, in dilip's presence i'm just saying that Maybe a UPI movement for the for the acquisition side, right? Somebody actually everything is getting digitized and the cost of device is going down. So this particular activity we'll learn more about it. But here in this document, we have gone deeper and deeper into the document itself. It's coming more as a as a white paper. Uh, my suggestion is that uh, as we go forward, we'll share you the link of the document. It's full fledged fifty page document to give you the perspective on how software cost works. What are the challenges? What are the positive point? And why we believe that um, when when uh, our uh, uh, PM Modi says uh, that that digital will grow, I think this will be one of the biggest tools uh, for growth as well. So we this document has a lot of details around how it is, and from both from the merchant perspective as well as from consumer perspective. So both the details are there in the document. Uh, and with this, uh, we move towards the knowledge session itself. Uh, and uh, uh, here, obviously, we have uh, Mr. Azbe. Uh, MD and CEO of NPCI. I think uh, everybody knows what uh, what Dilip and, and his team have done to the market. Uh, the market is booming because on the digital side because of what the great work they have done. We have Sanjeev. I think uh, from the from the payments perspective, Access Bank has been a leader, and getting his perspective is what we, we sort of thought that will be good, great for us. And Akash Sinha, uh, who is the CEO and co-founder of Cash Free Payment. So I think we have the right folks in the room. To, to take it forward. Uh, as we go forward, maybe the first question uh, to believe to, to you is maybe you can give you your, your perspective on the acquisition side and how it can be dramatically improved in the market. So what is the potential of acquisition market and how can, can, can it be improved in the current context? So maybe quick, uh, you can guide us on, on that side and then we'll move forward. Uh, thanks, uh, Samir and uh, hi, Sanjeev and uh, Akash. Uh, the way I uh, look at the, the acquiring side market uh, is uh, is uh, uh, definitely there is a, it's a, it's a long way to go to uh, to uh, from a growth standpoint and a maturity standpoint. And uh, today, when we look at uh, uh, Indian uh, customers, about 200 to 50 million, 250 million customers are paying, while the while the actual opportunity is 3x, right? So what it means is the acquiring business, if you if you multiply the merchant uh, growth, uh, which is another 3x to 4x uh, possible uh, easily, right? You know, it, what it means is, you know, if you multiply both the growths, it's, it's, it's about 10x growth possible in the number of digital payment transactions uh, that are going to be processed by uh, India. And when we speak about 10x growth, you know, it's it more or less... Uh, uh, the, 
the billion a day uh, vision what what npci has so when you look at that you know there is a huge scope for uh, the applying uh, when you uh, i think there is some noise uh, in the background let me just mute yeah yeah thank you uh, samit uh, the second uh, the the second part the way i look at it and and very happy to uh, to uh, to be participating in the launch of uh, softpos uh the way uh, the and i i strongly believe that the the software will bring more value than the hardware and you know i think moving towards the software driven approach uh right is uh, will be will be rewarding to the to the entire uh, ecosystem and very similar approach we took it in the uh, in the upi as well if you look at it uh, you know a few years back and uh, and the results are visible so so i think the software driven approach with the help of softpos will really add a lot of value to uh, to the system and and let me explain uh, uh, in the later in the presentation how it will add a uh, lot of value uh, there are many initiatives by the by the ecosystem to grow the the acceptance uh, you know whether it's uh, pidf which has been launched by the ecosystem with the with the guidance uh, by rbi uh, i i think we we are uh, at a very good position to grow the acceptance country wide and you know when you look at the the new users which are participating back in the digital payments those are coming in from tier 2 tier 3 and and only metro is contributing back metro or metropolitan areas are contributing to those those users so uh, so i think very uh, very well timed uh, soft pass uh, launch and uh, the the evolution of the soft pass uh, but i think it has to evolve uh, itself right it can't it can't just be a, a single payment uh, product right in that sense but we'll talk about it in, uh, during the during the uh, the discussion uh, afterwards uh, samit thank you thank you dilip thank you and maybe uh, your perspective sanjeev as a as a banker who has been driving in the market uh, what are the potential of acquisition and how i think uh, it will grow given that how cost is already there Yeah, thanks, Amit. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, hi, Dilip. Uh, hi, Akash. Uh, good afternoon to everybody else uh, who's listening in uh, as well. See, uh, quite interesting because, uh, and we keep discussing that uh, India obviously has reached a certain, uh, whether you call it cusp, whether you call it inflection point. Three uh, trillion dollar economy, close to two thousand per capita uh, dollar, and obviously from here onwards, the pace really accelerates. What has happened over the last three four years? Uh, on plastic now with upi really is a significant mushrooming of digital payments as you go around the country undoubtedly whether you are paying your taxi driver or rickshaw driver or you are paying for tea at a really small store etc between cards and qr payments have become significantly more digital okay now what comes in the way is the fact that one qr is fine however a lot of people do want to pay by card and they have not necessarily moved to the app they have not necessarily tokenized all of those aspects however a small retailer any part of the country but significantly i'm really talking about outside the top 8 outside the top 20 how can he accept it at a very very low cost and still very secure i think softpos really addresses these two boxes in a very significant way i am also not going to pitch this as the only answer to for the deepening of india's digital payments but a significant answer to what can lead to the next wave of growth so it's not a silver bullet it's one of many many bullets that india will need to fire on this path of deepening digital payments My keep in mind opinion. payments is an outcome of gdp growth it also leads to gdp growth so essentially in that sense it's a virtuous cycle we have seen this over the last 3 4 years it will continue to play out that's the context in which we need to understand and appreciate uh, this launch today but also the fact that this is just one of many milestones that we will have on the path of digital payments uh, that's my opening kind of context uh, samir and we will take it from there no perfect perfect in fact uh, we had jandan accounts everywhere but no point to use right i think this change will will dramatically uh, i mean for example in in villages we now see aps all over because the devices on a mobile works well with just that uh, biometric device i think this is what is going to happen in this case as well so akash since you are you are you are driving and building this up so maybe a quick pointer from your side before we go into deeper questions and to all the participants uh, we'll share the link for downloading the the white paper as well so you can download uh, and also you can ask questions on the chat box uh, i'll pick it up as we go forward and ask to uh, our our 
uh, veterans here, the, the guys who know much more than my, me by any context. So, Akash, over to you for your opening. Yeah, I'm not a veteran, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't mean age, man. Don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, got you. You're on mute. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, thank you, Samir. Again, hi everyone. See, Samir, I mean, for us, we are in the business of this payment solution for the last seven years, right? We are very active in helping all the online businesses access, you know, as many payment modes as possible, right? So today, if you go to any online website, you can access up to 120 payment modes, which is very seamless for all these merchants, right? And and, and we are very big supporter of digital payment solution. We want to, you know, really have digital payment seen everywhere. Right, but but once we start looking at the offline space, right, we feel offline space has a big friction in the name of hardware. Right, when we see hardware, one is not affordable by a very long list of SME merchants. Right, cost starts from 12k, the basic version, right, it goes up to 40, 50k. Then there's a significant cost of distribution. Then a significant cost of maintenance, it, and then a significant cost of upgrade, upgrading it. Right, so because of all this friction, we don't see a lot of acceptance around, you know, this acquiring infrastructure, you know, being being distributed in the even way in the market. Right. It's true that UP has disrupted digital payments in offline world in a big way, right? We have done a really great job there, right? I and mean, we have more than 10 crore UP installation in the market today. But still, there is a very large segment of merchants who want to accept money through credit modes, through EMI modes, through BNPL modes, through wallet modes. That is something we don't see in you know, today's hardware capable of providing that in a very fast and efficient manner. Right? First, there is a very big barrier in terms of cost, distribution, maintenance. And then there is a barrier in terms of scalability of these solutions. Right? And the answer for all these problems is the software-led approach. Right? That's why we have a pretty good strength on right? We have done a good job in terms of payment gateway, payouts, all the you know, collection dispersal product. And we see we can use the similar experience in making digital payments much more convenient, much more easy in the offline world too. Right? When a customer is walking into offline retail store, they should have similar kind of options which they have in the online space right? so that their experience remains uniform. Second is, in also we still need to do a massive work in terms of digitizing the cash collection. Right, helping merchants create the entire you know collection trace right? so that tomorrow they could be eligible for more lending products. Right, they can build things around loyalty products. Right, and to enable all this, we have to start digitizing this collection. Right, which is which is not happening at a scale we want to happen at a lot of places. Right, tier one, tier two, the penetration of you know cost, the hardware cost is pretty high, but if you look at tier three to tier six cities, right, there are a lot of regions in India where the XMTS infrastructure is pretty weak. Right, I mean it's there, but you know it cannot accept all the modes. And second bigger problem we see, right? I mean, in, in tomorrow, right? A lot of these guys would want to support both cash in, cash out kind of product, right? Which is pretty hard for hardware to do, right? You can accept money, but you cannot, you know, refund the money back to a customer in an easy way, right? So with the software approach, the number of you know options become more, right? You can go and target a lot of use cases, not just payments, right? I'm thinking beyond payments. You can also apply in transit. You can also use you know reward fund redemption technologies. Right, so it is just the opening of you know a lot of doors, right? Not just one door, and that's where we see a lot of revolution in this offline space when it comes to digital payments. So that is the idea we are using. That's why we are pretty bullish on this market, and we want to be a bigger supporter here. We want to improve the ecosystem. Right, it's not just about the product; it's more about how do we increase awareness in the ecosystem and have digital payment acceptance, you know, going up in the market. Okay, and I did not do the basics, right? Can you define what is soft sauce? Because otherwise. We'll talk about everything positive and all of that, but the participants are asking sure. me direct question, Ye kya ho hai? right? So I think it's good to define what soft pause is. I'll uh, in the context it can run, right? Simplify it, right? Today, when you walk into a shop, right? You when you have to transact with your card, you find a hardware machine presented in front of you. You either you know dip your card or you swap your card, and then you can you know pay using a card. Right? It's tomorrow, right? Tomorrow for any merchant, they can just download a soft pause app from you know provider like Cash or any other provider. And they can convert the existing Android phone to a POS device, right? So you don't have to buy any hardware. You just install an app. As soon as install it, right, your mobile becomes capable of accepting card transaction. As a customer, I'll walk in the store. I can just tap my card on the mobile phone, and payment will be completed, right? It's very seamless. Right? You don't have to worry about, you know. And best part, it's very scalable solution, right? In a store, you can have ten POS machines now with the software technology. And earlier, you could only have, you know, one POS in the entire store. Right. So this is a very simple app, it's a software-based solution. You install an app and you can convert any mobile into a POS device and you start accepting payment within minutes. But Max Drive, ka kya hoga? how will it Max Drive work, right? See, today we see the chip and NFC is pretty ubiquitous in the market, right? I mean, the acceptance is pretty high. I think most of the cards we issued since 2016 or 2017 have NFC capability there. And RBI has also mandated, I think, chip card, a lot of new cards. So the acceptance is there in the market. I think it's very rare to just find a Max Drive unless the card is and anyway, card expired within I think six to seven years, right? 
No, I, I was more worried on the Janzan side, right? So uh, there, there are many of them will actually have uh, max stripe. So basically, you can add uh, the small dongle uh, stuff, right? For the correct, correct. So we are also working with small dongles, with which you can, you know, dip the dip the card inside the device and also can swipe it. So those are solution working on. The intent for us to give a hundred percent solution to the market instead of you know not giving. Otherwise, you know, the the purpose will not get fulfilled. Right, but the idea is to reduce the cost, reduce the cost of maintenance, reduce the cost of distribution, reduce the cost of security upgradation, right? And that's where we'll make it much more acceptable in the market. No, perfect, perfect. So this is a question. Really, uh, uh, the question to you would be that uh, now that it has come, how the market will it will evolve both on the card side as well as on the uh, acquisition side, and how networks can accelerate it, right? Finally, the country is driven by by the networks, not by banks directly, right? So how can networks accelerate the whole process? so let me first correct that you know the country is driven by the by the banks and not by the networks uh, right you know the, <laughs> today uh, today uh, you know nobody knows uh, nobody knows uh, what network you are running but you know what uh, what card you have so for example axis bank you know everybody would know axis bank as a much stronger brand than it's a it's a customer facing brand rightly so so i don't uh, see it as a problem as well uh the the point is you know we at npci right you know we have been working uh, on this uh, uh very consciously in terms of you know how do we grow demand and supply both and you know wh whether it's a whether it's a demand from a demand standpoint right so most of the cards uh, which are issued on a rupee networks are ncmc uh, compliant akash was uh, talking about it and you know i will be really happy to uh, to update that you know over 30 million cards which are issued in last few months are ncmc compliant and i don't see ncmc and uh, nfc compliant right so i i would strongly believe that next uh, uh, two to three years time you know approximately 300 million uh, indians who are doing a digital transactions we all of them will have a nfc compliant ncmc rupee cards right that's a that's a point number one so so the the the, the demand is taken well taken care of uh from a supply standpoint uh, you know we have been working with a lot of providers to uh, to any to get the soft pause developed right because see technically you know when you have the physical pause uh, right you know it's very very complex for a merchant to operate right you know you, you know you have to uh, do the eod sod and you know there are cryptic buttons menus uh, to be driven and very similar to the uh, to the uh, to the atms and while atm flow is fairly simple Uh, so i think this software driven uh, story really enhances the merchant and customer both uh, experience in that sense the second uh, story uh, which i would like to add in here is you know while there is a high amount of standardization on the card side uh, you know there is a huge need of localization uh, from a from a need and india perspective right and when i say uh, the localization you know the there is a huge opportunity for this all soft pass to become a for example a bbps access points right bharat bpa access points right because today today bbps gets uh, such a huge opportunity back to the ecosystem why why wouldn't we have enablement of the while you collect the payments also fulfillment of the service right and that service could be the biller the service could be uh, the the dth or any other value added service you are talking about right so from our perspective we are working with all the all the fintech startups in the ecosystem who are trying to work on the software side boss to kind of bring in the both demand and supply together and also create a huge differentiation in terms of adding up the the local uh, clearing houses what we have built over the over the years so that you know it increases the traffic it incre increases the value proposition to the merchant in that sense fantastic fantastic and so uh, i think uh, from a, as an acquirer i think if you look at the market uh, the market boomed after a lot after that demonetization and the country changed but number of uh, points are still 5.6 million right that's what the rbi data is and now how will it grow post this scenario where almost every mobile can be a pause device uh, and also what kind of innovation can happen so what is your visualization and what you think uh, is ahead of the market for us so for, for somebody you know innovate, innovate as well on top right uh, yes sir so uh, broadly 5.6 million uh, merchants are covered today our estimate is the total population is close to 5 crore so we are roughly hitting the 10 percentage mark so roughly let's say it's an iceberg obviously we are not talking about the size of the iceberg we are just saying in terms of number uh, of 
the, the larger merchants are obviously all terminalized. Uh, second point is while this deepening has to happen, essentially four or five things are acquiring device has to have, right? One, it should just work. Uh, whether it is a card dev, whether it is a tap and pay or whatever, etc., it has to work. It has to be secure. Three, it has to be low cost, which decides to a large extent whether the merchant accepts it or not. Fourth, if the signal that it transmits the message on is to the extent 4G rather than 2G, it's better serviced all over the country right now. Because 2G services, there are certain pockets of the country where it uh, is not necessarily as good as some of the other pockets of the country. If you look at it, soft pause actually meets all these requirements. Is it safe? Yes, it is safe. Is it? Uh, does it work? Yeah, it obviously works. It's built on smartphone, which actually means the message is then transmitted on 4G, which means you won't have a problem in parts of Northeast, parts of there are various pockets of the country, parts of the country where there are very patchy 2G signals. I think the third part is the crux of it. Uh, the fact that it is low cost because the MDR is exactly the MDR that you have on a credit card and debit card. And to the extent some of the merchants are uh, are uh, are smaller, uh, obviously the MDR can be even lower. Uh, because they enjoy a different uh, differential MDR structure, uh, the merchant discount rate structure. Significant point, a terminal today costs close to 500 to 600 rupees a month. Okay, it could be 300 as well. I'm talking about the terminals you can carry around. Obviously, there are phone line terminals which are not popular in India, which are free, but nobody increasingly is taking those. So really what is being put out in the market are those terminals you can carry on GPRS as we call it. These costs upwards from 200, 300 or really 500, 600. If you take it to a merchant who's got a turnover of, let's say, a, a lakh a month, so 70,000 a month, so on, so forth, etc., And then you have a margin on that. And this is then becoming a very significant cost. Drop. Does he already have a smartphone? Yes, he has. It could be the owner. It could also be shop boys in his shop. All of them have smartphones. Between that smartphone being NFC enabled or... Just what Akash was referring to, having an additional device which can accept, uh, it costs as low as 1,000 rupees, right? And you can then do a CapEx or we can invest in all of that stuff. It means you can do transactions which are on the smartphone through tap or you can actually do what is called pen on glass. Which means the smartphone is used to initiate and then you can put the pin on the smartphone. This is very, very low cost which takes out one large friction factor, which is the cost of the hardware, or virtually there is no hardware. If at all the dongle is there, that's a bit of hardware, but essentially it takes cost out. In India, we have seen, once you take cost out, acceptance factor can be really high. That's the context. Now, will it meet success? All of those things will happen as rubber meets the road. But fact is, this sounds like a fairly good proportion because it's meeting virtually all of what we call the normal acid test for an acquiring device. Uh, rest obviously we will see as as I said once reality of the market hits it. Yeah, so that's my context. This could be a large part again, not a silver bullet, but large part of deepening from the 5.6 million to what we estimate as the potential of the country, which is roughly around five crore. And, and that would also mean that uh, Sajeev, from a customer perspective, he has more options, right? So this is the all merchant uh, view, right? How about the customer view? Any thoughts for how customer life will change? Because it's very irritating when you go somewhere. He will take UPI, but nothing else he will take, right? Uh, the Panwala here will never take anything other than UPI in the country, right? So any thoughts on how that will also change from a customer perspective? Yeah, so we have to understand, see, everybody doesn't necessarily download the app, right? To be able to scan and all of that stuff. Uh, what it does is, oh, the Panwala doesn't have a problem accepting digital payments. That is what UPI and QR has already shown us. He has no problem. On the margin, we can argue whether that MDR makes a difference or doesn't make a difference, so on, so forth, etc. But I don't think that's a huge friction factor. Fact is, he doesn't want to pay 500 rupees for the device. Every month, by the way. It's not a one-time, it's a per month. Once it is on a smartphone, whether tap or the dongle, I think that friction is significantly answered. Customer is better off because he doesn't have to download any app, etc. And anyway, it's an, it's an extra choice. We are not saying you have to do this or that. You have this, it works. If you don't want to download the app or don't want to do the transaction for that occasion on the uh, on the QR, you can give your card and the card goes through. Customer gets more option. Merchancy is low friction. Conceptually, I'm saying it's meeting what we believe is what the market requires. Rest, obviously, market will tell us. No, I agree. I agree. Uh, so maybe uh, moving on to Akash from your side, I think you are moving from a uh, 
PG business to a POS business, right? Uh, which is the uh, online to offline as well. And maybe there's a space for a omnichannel platform as well, right? So what made you move in this direction and, and maybe some more illustrative of the benefits it will accrue. And one pointer, will it also become like a uh, like a SDK kind of framework where uh, in the framework itself, the way you have in-app kind of framework coming up. So maybe more, more ideas, more thoughts on uh, why you did it and what is the benefit and how Omnichannel will work, right? See, first, when you look from technology perspective, PG and offline payments work in a very similar way, right? Today, all of this cloud enabled POS machine, which merchants normally use, right? The backend is largely similar. In PG, it's card no spread transaction. In, in POS, it's card present transaction. But in the backend, you use similar kind of payment switches. And you follow the similar settlement logic, refund logic, dispute logic. Everything is very identical. And secondly, we as a company are very big support of digital payments, right? And we wanted to do something which can be scaled up, right? I mean, what Sanjeev has mentioned, if you have to scale the number of POS numbers from 5.6 million to, say, 50 million, yeah, that's pretty hard to do through something which is not scalable, right? You cannot build so many hardware devices. You cannot distribute it easily. But you have to rely on something which can work over the wire, right? Which, which I create an app once, which you know all the you know like 10 million, 20 million merchants can download and start accepting the payment. That is a kind of solution we have been looking for for a while. And luckily, in the last two years, all the networks have come together and come up with this soft course as a new technology. And they're providing good support around it, right? In terms of security, in terms of certification, in terms of making sure we can build it faster and all that. So there is a so there is a good intent and plus there is support from the ecosystem to make this possible, right? And by looking at this, it felt it makes sense for us to give this kind of product in the market. And for merchants also it's become a very, you know, unified experience, right? Today we have a bunch of customers who have a stores in the offline world and who also sell online, right? So they can collect, you know, both, they can have digital payments at both the places, right? Be it offline, be it online. And they can see all of the revenue data on a single place, right? So that is the advantage we are bringing to the merchants that we want to work with. In terms of technology, I think we can enable more, right? I mean, as I said, merchants can have loyalty solution, merchants can have BNPL solution. Tomorrow, wallets are also being you know, interoperable with UPI, right? So you can also use wallet payments whenever you walk in a store. So these kind of things are not possible when you, you know, go to the traditional hardware support that is predominant in the market today. Right? So that is one. Second is, yes, see, I mean, we are not tying it to the mobile device. Mobile is the first device through which we can deliver this technology. Tomorrow, it can be part of any tablet. It can be part of any kind of transit system, right? Suppose you have a card, you can either use to withdraw money from ATM, or you can use, also use it to say, you know, ride a metro, right? For that, these guys don't have to spend a lot in building the acquiring infrastructure, right? Because acquiring is now cheaper. You just install an app in any kind of, you know, device which has Android opting system, and it can start accepting, you know, the, your, your, your cards, right? Prepaid, prepaid cards, debit cards, right? So the use case is beyond payments also, right? This is what I want to, you know, stress on today, right? You can use it in transit, if there is any temporary event happening, right, then you can accept card then and there. Or if you are running a large retail store, right, you can have checkout option on the floor itself, right? You can avoid queues completely. And in pandemic-like situation, no one likes a standing queue, right? That again increases the risk, right? So you can have you know 10 checkout points, 20 checkout points in large store. Right? Say or take example, restaurant, right? Instead of you know, like everyone waiting for a card machine, you can simply have a checkout beside your table. So a lot of new kind of use cases, new, new kind of behaviors can come up in the market. The best part is during this pandemic in UPI, right? Both the customer and merchant ecosystem are comfortable using the smartphone as a payment tool, right? It was not prevalent before pandemic. Right? People were using smartphone, but there was hesitancy. This pandemic has made everyone very comfortable with a smartphone using as a, you know, during the payment process, right? And that is something we'll back on top of it, right? With a soft course, we're not going to change the behavior. We're going to tell them you can use the same smartphone, right? To go in, in the offline store and make the payment, right? That's why this is the right time to attack this kind of problem. And we can totally scale the acquiring infrastructure in the market and up to 10x of what we have today. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. And I remember in, uh, I think 2015 odd, uh, uh, when, when when I think UPA was coming in, we were also part of the cohort, which was trying to figure out what innovation we can do. And I remember presenting something, I mean, my team did something on taxi uh, use case, right, uh, long back. Uh, but of course, uh, with time, so many of those use cases uh, came into the, into the market and we are all still figuring out what more UPA can do. So maybe, uh, Dilip, I had two questions from your, your side. One is to figure out what you think are the new use cases which can be built on top of that soft cost. Because I think visualization and communication is very, very essential. I still believe that the kind of decks uh, in those days, um, uh, we are seeing from NPC side and all of us were actually looking at what we can build. I think that was a big, big accelerator for us. Uh, otherwise, we would not have imagined some of those. So that is one question, which what are the new use cases which can come up? 
and second is uh, how did it help also this whole framework on inclusion side because jandan had card but not nowhere to go right and and uh, with aps you could provide that framework with just a thumb now with this framework coming on how the inclusion side will be dramatically changing including obviously the credit which always we think about so uh, you know samir before we uh, before we uh, look at you know what are the possibilities i think we we still have to go back to basics right you know I, and i i don't i think you know the there could be many uh, players who are offering the soft pause but unless you truly uh, uh, leverage the software i think the if the effort of the acquiring entity acquiring bank or a fintech is to just replace that a uh, hardware box with a with a soft pause giving just migrating the same functionality uh, what you have uh, what you had on the uh, uh, the pause machine by on the smartphone i think it will defeat the purpose right so it it first i think it has to provide a a really great merchant experience and let me explain this what i'm thinking about it the way i look at it uh, the the merchant right you know while now you you get it back to the smartphone right you know you are trying to give a a b2b experience right but can you give it by b2c way right can you can you actually give a very very simplified payment uh, whether it's onboarding whether it's transaction a zero touch experience to the merchant first right so that he first he is so comfortable he gets so used to it right in terms of using that soft pause in a very seamless manner right not not by doing 10 clicks and first select the transaction uh, do this do that are this is you know if the he is using the device for the payments why he has to select so many things right you know I, so can you really make a zero touch experience for the merchant i think this is the first basic expectation which i would like i would like to uh, have it you know not replicating the current world uh, payment but really redesign this whole thing for the for the next gen uh, payments which very simple simplified similarly though india is a very diverse country right you know the, the multilingual approach the the voice enabled approach we require we we can't go back just with one approach but if you want to look at the scale which sanjeev and akash both have been talking about you need to create a variety of wide experience because a merchant is a unique customer right and he might have different needs so unless unless we are able to create that level of experience i don't think the scale up is going to happen so i think there is a lot of effort is required to build that experience uh, back for the merchant the second is you know this soft pause actually has to enable merchant to drive the digital right you know today uh, what happens is and i have i have seen this number of times that the merchant does not really play the pay the play the role in the in the digital payment right you know it's a, it's a the, the digital payment not only in india but the worldwide is predominantly driven by the customers right and this is where you spoke about you know uh, and then sanjeev was talking about you know the customer does not have customer can pay with the card customer can pay with the smart app right so today customer has both options right now but the question is how merchant can influence the the migration from cash to uh, digital i think this is where soft boss will have to play a big role in terms of uh, you know driving their experience to drive more digital right otherwise you know why would what is the difference between this pos machine which was erst while pos machine and a and a smart pos smart pos by you know just by adding uh, two more or three more payment experiences wallet and other things the usage is not going to scale up i think the objective is scale up the acceptance and scale up the usage right so how does this software actually drives up the usage is what i think all the technology players like uh, akash and other players will have to start uh, Uh, putting their mind the third thing uh, which actually strikes to my mind that there is one sector which is really really uh, not penetrated and which is like a mobility sector we keep talking about it i you know while the metros are coming up and metros will drive uh, uh, drive the usage and i i was talking about it before we have 30 million 40 million now ncmc cards now which now recently a regulator has permitted to do offline retail transaction as well now now not only really the the transit but also the retail and and otherwise so the question is now how this soft pause can play a role uh, in the mobility sector right because this is predominantly the cash 
driven sector throughout the country more or unorganized and more and now with the ncmc which is actually solving the supply uh, the demand side problems by getting the the offline transaction low very high, very efficient uh, high speed low cost uh, you know you know the card the keychains you know we have recently launched rupee on the go keychains and those kind of things the bracelets the 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 watch uh, you know we have launched variety of you know the the rings uh, you know what the younger generation uh, 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 may like now the question is can soft pause actually change the uh, because it's software driven can it actually take care of the mobility as a sector and please understand that you know what you supply at the retail pause will not work at the mobility right you know if their requirements are completely different right so so is there a way that because it's a software driven can it be customized to take care of some fair computation some typical requirements of the mobility uh, merchant which is a auto driver or a taxi driver or a or a or a or a, a train or buses those kind of things is it possible to adopt that because that's a huge opportunity in my assessment you know at least uh, you know 10 million such points exist today which do not accept digital payments right so so i think the use cases summarizing uh, uh, your point uh, samir that unless the so it, it truly lives up to the software driven approach right i i don't i don't think the soft pause will will just remain as a replacement of the physical pause right but it, if it, it has, if it truly has to revolutionize the the payments it has to be truly software driven approach and which should be visible in merchant experience the different se sectors which are actually untapped you know it should not compete with the with the existing payment mode but it should create create its own space to scale up the volume to scale up the acceptance and and create a universal supply solution uh, in the assisted mode uh, payments so i think this is great this is a great in fact uh, you talk about experiences i think this is critical because suddenly uh, the devices will move away from the maybe some bit of a regular uh, i mean proper uh, regular shops actually to the kela walas of the world right now kela wala guy would not know how to go about doing anything more than the basics right and he really we really can't give him the experience i remember one time i went to a shop that person was not trained they couldn't charge for some time and then i they gave it to me. can you try i just couldn't figure out which one to click and finally i had to give cash and left left right so it was so difficult i'm not talking about too far back maybe few, few years back only 3 years back even today i think the pause devices will be difficult you need to get the expert yahan pe emi dabao to emi wala option dikhta hai right it's very difficult it's not really intuitive right maybe the other thing which i was just thinking that now the kela wala who is not getting loan because his transactions are not digitized will be now on the rail road so much in cash advance will move to the kela wala ke liye advance as well right which is not visible so i think wherever payments go lending goes after that i think the market should dramatically change from the credit side right otherwise they will remain Create invisible as well. Oh, perfect, perfect. So Sanjeev, uh, I think uh, you have a view on all sides, right? So maybe what are the benefits which will accrue to the merchants because now you have a, ch a possibility of credit as well along with payments. And what are the challenges, right? I mean, uh, technically, soft pause has come arrived, but has not make any 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 noise out there. It's like silently it exists. and it is not taken a blast i mean upi have existed for some time and just took a blast with demon right uh, how, what how do you ensure that we it also explodes in the right direction not explodes in the wrong direction right direction and scales up and helps the market thought your thoughts on that yeah it's very difficult to say at what point it really becomes uh, crosses what we call the critical mass okay uh yeah softpass has been around a lot of people keep uh, coming out with some stuff on softpass my sense is there is like let's say a right time i don't know whether the right time is today or the right time is tomorrow but fact is it's about time that we really can go to market with this um and we have two solutions right so if you have only one solution which is nfc you will still have constraints every uh, smartphone device that the shopkeeper may have and the shop boys may have will not be nfc uh, enabled uh apart from that the dongle is pretty cheap so so it exists now sameer and uh, fact is today what has happened over the last 3 4 years with the mushrooming of upi and qr is the shopkeeper and you need not call it shop right this could actually be your thela wala it could actually be just your very very small neighborhood tea shop uh, panwala jo bol rahe the all of those categories 
uh, very small vegetable vendor all of them have now become very comfortable accepting digital payments this is what didn't exist many of these places you go to when you talk to the merchant he's saying yeah i'm okay dealing in cash right this is like really deep uh, in the country many of them now are comfortable dealing with digital payments because that's the first part you put the digital divide and all of that stuff that we talk about india versus bharat all of those divides you put together i think that has been crossed okay then it's only and this, does this device does this solution let me not call it device does this solution meet the three four requirements what i said are the asset test for a acquiring a solution not me, let me not call it device again solution it does after that samir the market is is intelligent enough wise enough to accept or reject okay uh, our idea as banks our idea is obviously dilip on the network side uh, cash free as a Is to take solutions to market, and obviously there will be learnings. Just because the first one doesn't work doesn't mean that you give up. You just work out what needs to be changed. That's based on market feedback. You adapt, you revise, you then go back, and uh, because the potential is very large. See, it's a country which is huge. Uh, you're crossing the two thousand dollar per capita again. The starting context that I put, and there is a very very close correlation, as I'm saying, between except acquiring uh, as in payments to GDP back to payments. That loop, all of these things we know. Uh, rest, as I'm saying, market will always tell you the truth. Thank you. This is good. This is good. And for everyone else, uh, uh, the white paper is available for download. Uh, you can pick it up and uh, sort of go through it. Uh, and of course, uh, you want to reach to cash free team as well as my team for some discussion. We can always have it. So uh, maybe. Uh, Uh, and and also please keep posting your questions. Uh, this is our last formal question, and then rest last fifteen minutes we will spend on your questions coming across. So I'm just assimilating the set of questions coming from your side, and I'll ask in the end, right? But uh, but Akash, uh, uh, maybe uh, you want to talk a bit about uh, what this. I mean, there's very little information available on software generally in market. Uh, some of the queries which are coming uh, back to me in this in this chatter is actually about something else. I mean, maybe, maybe we are not. the market is not really informed about what soft pass is so uh, maybe you want to talk about what all is the content in the white paper and why people should pick up and uh, some details about that before we go ahead yeah sure samir i'll i'll come to that i think before i just like to you know, add few points for the late pan sanjeev mentioned right see the way to you know increase the adoption in the market is go after use cases where we already have a demand where customers want to pay using card but we don't have a acceptance infrastructure and hey, those are the markets you know where the current pos hardware couldn't make a big dent right those are the market where software should go and you know find a success instead of directly competing right say example of say paying to a delivery agent right or or you know paying to a taxi driver or any kind of you know say if you are riding a bus at the bus stand in these cases pos is you know like non existent right literally non existent because because such kind of you know hardware is not possible to operate in this. it's not interoperable right it's not portable Right, so those are the use cases. I think this technology will go after first, and and we definitely have work on the you know like user experience, merchant experience. It has to be as easy as again paying cash, right? I mean that that's the way to you know fight with that cash. To make it anything complicated than that, then people would be discouraged to use it. And just to add the context, I think there are many use cases where pass hardware is facing hard time because of the nature of the technology, right? Not because you know there is no need or ask. Because nature of technology is is acting as a limiting factor. in those areas i think we also plan to go first and see how we can you know keep an increase in the coverage from there right and then that 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 will also you know make us learn a lot about how to build a great technology how to build a great experience in the market right coming to white white paper is more about introducing this technology but right? we want to take users through the evolution of pos like how pos looked at back at 1980 how pos looks at 1990 and how pos the entire time looks today right we will also touch base on what capabilities do they bring for the merchant right more than payments right they can work on loyalty they can work on Post lending, they can work on you know, like EMI solution. They can work on like getting cash advances, overdraft you know, from the bank or whatever partners they work with. So POS is really evolved, and and we also are touching base in the future how POS is supposed to look like. Right? I mean, there is a big requirement of cash in, cash out kind of system. You know, we should be present there. And then what Delhi mentioned, right? there there is a need a lot of valued services at a POS terminals. Right, things like BPS. I should be able to walk into any store and pay my water bill. Right, if if I don't have you know right UBI apps with me. So a lot of you know kind of convenience product could be sold through this device. So those are the areas we have touched base upon. We have also touched base upon what are the regulatory support we have already around it, and what are the regulatory support we could have to make it a bigger success, right? That is the second. Third is more on the consumer behavior, right? How ready the consumers of India are there to use this technology, right? How ready the merchant base is is there in India to use this technology? 
See, these are the major aspects of the white paper. It's a very, you know, like good read. It's very informative. We also touch base upon the, you know, the circulation of cards we have, circulation of cards machines we have. Right? How did we see the delta of card usage since pandemic? Yes, we have touched base upon a lot of good data points, and that can tell people how the entire payment ecosystem is growing in the market and how this technology can act as accelerator to grow digital payment acceptance further. Right? How can it, you know, reduce cash circulation or cash usage in the market you know, once we make it popular? But uh, one interesting question which has come is that uh, if this comes up, will we have a new instruments coming up, right? Uh, UBI was a new instrument, right? Will we have new instrument uh, if this comes up? I know it looks awkward to, uh, but yeah, maybe it may happen, right? So any thoughts on, uh, is there a possibility of new, uh, new sort of products coming up to cater to this availability of this product, right? See, from my side, I think there is a big possibility. Like today, there is limitation in terms of adding new things the hard way easy way, right? Because the system is also not uniform, right? You have different devices being used by different merchants. Best part of software, it will be standard solution used by all the merchants using software, right? So you can update it, you know, on the fly, you can update it from the backend, from the cloud. It's easy for you to distribute new, you know, payment modes in the market through this technology, right? And you can also have different kind of authentication there. Today on a POS machine, you can only have pin authentication. Right? Tomorrow with this kind of thing, you can have different kind of, you can have biometric authentication, possible possible to be built around it, right? Which is not, not possible in the current setup, right? Even if you look at technology like eRupee, right? eRupee can be, it become easier for people to get it redeemed if merchants have the soft cost like solution, right? I mean, merchants don't have to invest in additional hardware to accept something like eRupee. So, so it opens a lot of possibilities. I think whatever use cases we have been, you know, facing hard time to fix it. Soft course can give solution to most of them. I'm not saying 100%, I think, but we'll have, you know, very large coverage of whatever the demands of consumer merchants are in the market that can be catered well with this technology. And you can ask your opinion on it. Yeah, sorry, I missed you, Akash. You, I'm you, saying maybe Dilip and Sanjeev can share the opinion. Yeah, that'll be good. I think this will be useful. Dilip and... Uh... So, uh... You know, I, I think the opportunities are are uh, are uh, infinite. But I think uh, I think you know the India will will uh, continue to work uh, at least for next ten years, right? Both in the self service mode and assisted mode, right? So uh, that's that's the way I uh, think about the country. So most of the payment modes will coexist in the in the self service as the as well as assisted uh, model. So so. Uh, while the self-service is, is fairly software-driven, right? In that sense, uh, fairly moved on to the to the app or a NFC card or a uh, or a uh, or a you know the new variants which we are trying to pay on the go devices, keychains, and those kind of things. I think the soft boss provides the opportunity for the assisted mode uh, revolution, right? You know the assisted mode revolution and. And hopefully, I, I I believe that you know it can also bring in a lot of new use cases uh, in the market. E rupee is one thing which we uh, which we spoke about, and I think with the with the offline technology, right? You know, today the 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 uh, the network connectivity, right, of four G availability back uh, throughout the the country uh, is is not possible at this stage. And when we look at the offline transaction, which are really high value, you know, today we have about 75% uh, of the total country's cash transactions are below 100 rupees, right? That's how economic services. So, uh, you know, I think our offline capability of the softwares can actually change the customer experience for the for the small ticket transactions using uh, using NCMC. So, uh, I, I think the opportunities are infinite. Uh, whether it changes the the game or not, again, it depends on the ecosystem of banks and fintechs. How do they position? How do they think through? How do they, uh, you know, they they have they cannot think through as a replacement. They cannot re th think through as a as a replacement of existing mode, but a but a new innovation or a evolution of the of the whole, uh, 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 you know, the the digital payment or, or payment of a service uh, to the merchant uh, ecosystem and the relevant uh, use cases implementation. Yeah, and Sanjeev, your thoughts as well. A couple of thoughts, right? So, uh, question is in terms of will it lead to new products coming in? Uh, my sense is, see, payment, frankly, uh, is a pretty simple set of products, right? Your card, your form factor, actually. Uh, 
So long back, we used to take out money from a wallet that was replaced to some extent by plastic that has been replaced or added in many ways with the UPI, which is finally connecting to your bank account. So it's another form of, let's say, a debit card. It's a formless uh, debit card. Uh, there is BNPL now available in the market. All I'm saying is it may not take off because of soft pause. It may take off as digital payments get deepened in the country. Uh, that's the context I would look at it. Does this form factor lend itself more to one form of issuing instrument, UPI card, BNPL? I don't think so. In that sense, it's a reasonably, what I would say is a secular solution out there. Uh, it really is a merchant driven uh, solution. What will it lead to on the other side? Very difficult for me to predict, Samir, but at least I don't see a trend which I can say very obviously yeah, this is what it leads to. Mm -hmm. um, second point, again, uh, I just want to emphasize that as we have seen over the last three, four years, right? When UPI has come in, it is not like cards growth has gone down because people keep asking, is it replacing? I'm actually seeing cards also grow, maybe at a lower, maybe at a lower pace than five years back, but then the market has also become deeper. Similarly, on the acquiring side, I am not seeing this replace your normal terminal. This will lead to further deepening. On the margin, there may be some merchant who will not take the normal device, but this device. But really, the point is all of these on the issuing side or on the acquiring side are leading to deepening of payments in the country. My sense is that's a secular trend we will continue to see. Uh, and that, I think, is reasonably safe to say. Uh, rest, as I said, again, earlier in the discussion, uh, market will tell us if this is the final solution that will be taking off like a rocket, or we need to modify certain things, which obviously we'll obviously have our eyes and ears open for. Yeah, that's pretty much, yes, I mean, my take on it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think there are two questions coming up. One is interesting, saying that uh, when what will happen to micro ATMs uh, post a soft pass coming in? Uh, so, and that is one. And then somebody is asking that, can we have APS also integrated on that uh, device uh, so that uh, you don't end up on the, let's say if you go to village and you have, somebody wants to put thumb, you have to plug in one dongle, then you have to another dongle. So I think uh, that's that's a that's a thought process coming uh, from that. So innovation already on the table, right? Akash, you want to take it up? Oh, well, these are great ideas, right? I'm, I'm sure like you know, at least we're able to trigger such kind of thought. I mean, at the end of the day, this app should be, able to do just more than payments, right? Tomorrow, if you go into apparel store and requesting for refund for your return product, right? So today they just give you credit or they try to give you cash. But tomorrow with this kind of solution, they can also send money to your bank account from the you know counter itself, right? Or I take example, when you cancel a flight ticket at an airport, right? They try to give you cash in return. So such use cases can also be handled through pause in future. And obviously things like APS and other things could be integrated as, as the BBPS can also be part of it. Right. So a bunch of things could be done because it's easy to scale it. Just that we have to keep on training the merchant, right? Keep just adding feature technology won't help. You have to, you know, train the merchant. You have to tell them this is secure. You also have to make customers aware of it. There'll be an entire process to make anything successful. And that will also be a part of this journey. Right? So on the day one, we'll try to go after simpler solution, which is making the life easier. And then we can keep on adding more value so that it becomes more and more attractive. And that will definitely help us deepen the market. But to start with, there is already a big demand where POS hardware are not able to help merchants or help customers. Those use cases should be handled first. And then definitely we can go APS, BPS. And then because on the day one, you don't want to compete with all the solutions in the market. Right? That will just confuse people. So there is a possibility, but I think we should take baby steps and, and reach there at the right time. Okay. 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 And another question which is coming from a cash perspective, right? Uh, once this happens, uh, would we have a uh, option? I mean, since everybody will walk around with literally a POS machine on their hand, would cash at POS or soft POS be an option? Anybody can take it, maybe Dilip or anybody can want to take it? No, definitely. I, I think the the uh, the the point is very valid. And, you know, I actually, uh, when let's assume that everybody is driving the, uh, the POS uh, with them, right? You know, it becomes, it creates an infinite uh, opportunities. It creates a very simple, uh, modes of payments just just for example you know i'm on a i'm on a payment uh, site on the on my uh, phone uh, and you know instead of you know adding up the upi pin i just tap my card on my own phone right you know, it's, it makes it so simple it makes it so simple to to get there obviously it might take some more time to get there but i think 
the the soft pause has the ability to uh, to drive to drive the experience both on a merchant side and consumer side both right obviously it has to evolve it has to uh, to see that uh, future but uh, and once the once the experience is changed changed uh, right you know i think the driving the different variety of use cases may not be that difficult in my assessment because finally it's all software driven in that sense no i agree i think uh, when uh, when delivery guys come to houses or or maybe this uh, i mean urban urban company com guys come i think they carrying their own devices will be very very powerful right uh, otherwise very difficult they have to depend on the other side so i think this kind of business will change but with this i think as we move towards the closure of the session uh, my request to each one of you please download the documents available uh, and maybe last minute comment last comments few comments from from each one of you uh, dilip starting with you a last comment before we conclude uh, see uh, you know we are very excited with this uh, soft pause uh, evolution we have tied up with many partners in the in the market and you know now that there is a huge emphasis back on a on a tap and go and ncmc card and with the with the recent enablement uh, by rbi on that uh, less than 200 uh, offline transactions uh, i i think this is a great uh, enabler i i think the soft pause is a great enabler enabler to drive large scale digitization in in the country and uh, i hope that we are able to deliver the use cases the localization the the merchant and customer experience in in truly software way and and just not by replacing the existing uh, uh, payment uh, mode so i i we are very bullish at npci and and i think you will see us uh, driving uh, the the ncmc rupee in a big way uh, to uh, for, for a better adoption of contactless payments better adoption of small ticket payments uh, in the in the large uh, citizen scale uh, volume level thank you thank you and last comments from your side sanjeev yeah, again as i said earlier uh, quite a uh, quite an interesting phase uh, after what you've seen over the last 4 5 years which is really significant deepening of digital payments uh, in the country from here onwards next 5 to 7 years my sense is uh, we will just continue to see this trend and once you have a certain uh, the, the size of the digital payments uh, in the country is pretty significant on this if you add a compounding of 30 40 percentage these are very very significant numbers we are talking about what it does for all of us as consumers what it does for the merchant what it does actually for the country as a whole in terms of economy gdp is very very significant contribution i think that's the phase we are in very excited to look at soft pause as another let me put it this way another answer to the suite of what we need to solve for in the country uh, and yeah so quite uh, quite bullish quite positive and uh, actually in many ways uh, quite positive about looking forward to what the response of the market has from this i think the market uh, would react very positively i'm a small merchant uh, and i i only have a gateway and i can't have a ticket from anything else one time somebody came across and gave me cash and got irritated i i think that our entry is still not accounted for proper it's very difficult right so totally with you and akash last minutes uh, last one one point from your side before you close see, see we as a country right for last 5 to 7 years we have we have been doing a very great job in building the infrastructure and i see this sort was also one of the one of the you know like step towards building a payment infrastructure growing the payment infrastructure that also aligns with a social goal and once we have you know country you know like well fed with the infrastructure then next sort of innovation could be built on top of it right so country cannot you know just take a leap of faith you know just like this so this is a very important stepping stone that's how we see it but obviously there is a great business to be made but also we'll achieve a larger social goal if we make it really successful and timing is also right right people are you know like people are very accepting of new ideas merchants are also willing to explore new things the market is also very receptive to these kind of innovation and once we try it out then obviously by using the merchant feedback the customer feedback we can build a lot of technologies on top of it and make life easier further for customers and market and make digital payment more and more successful right i mean that will help you create a lot of layer of you know services on top of it but this is the starting point to you know of any economy of the digitization right but but cash is digitized then you can do lending insurance wealth whatever you want to do right, on top of it but this is the starting point and that can have a very big trickle effect if it becomes successful thank you thank you thank you and thanks everyone uh, from the from the audience side who who joined in and asked the questions and of course i know that many of them have downloaded as well and uh, thanks dilip uh, sanjeev and akash for your insights thank you this is a fabulous learning for me and mujhe kuch karna nahi pada sun sun ke seekh liya maine thank you guys thank you thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank, thank you thank you thank you thank you akash thanks everyone thank you
です。